This video is about the trigonometry of acute angles. We'll be reviewing the primary trigonometric ratios and we'll be learning about three different trig ratios. If we have a right angle triangle, we can use trigonometry to find a missing angle or side in that triangle. We're always going to have an angle of reference. Now this could either be an angle that you know or an angle that you need to find. The hypotenuse is always directly across your right angle. It's opposite of your right angle, and it's always the longest side in a right angle triangle. The side that's opposite of your angle of reference is our opposite side, and the angle that's right next to the angle of reference, that's your adjacent side. We have our three primary trig ratios that allow us to find that missing angle or side in the right angle triangle. So we have our sine ratio. The sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. The cosine ratio, so the cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the tangent ratio, so the tan of that angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side. And there's an acronym to help us remember these ratios, SOKOTOA. There are three other trig ratios, and these are the reciprocal trigonometric ratios. And these ratios are cosecant, secant, and cotangent. They're just the reciprocal of your primary trig ratios. So cosecant is the reciprocal of our sine theta, our sine of an angle. So it's hypotenuse over opposite. And the secant ratio is the reciprocal of our cosine ratio. So that's hypotenuse over adjacent. And then the cotangent ratio is just the reciprocal of our tangent ratio. So this is adjacent over opposite. Most calculators do not have a button for the reciprocal trig ratios. So to evaluate the reciprocal trig ratios, if you have the cosecant of 20 degrees, you can do one divided by the sine of 20 degrees. So you will need to remember the names of our reciprocal trig ratios. So you can use one over sine theta or one over cos theta or one over tan theta to evaluate these reciprocal trig ratios. And it's also really important to note that the reciprocal is not the same as an inverse. So evaluating for your reciprocal trig ratios is not the same as using these buttons on your calculators, the inverse of sine, the inverse of cos, and the inverse of tan, because your calculators do have these three buttons, but that's for when you're evaluating for an unknown angle. But to evaluate for the reciprocal trig ratios, if you do not have these reciprocal buttons, which likely you may not, you will need to use one over sine or one divided by cosine or one divided by tangent. So let's work on an example. For this question, we need to evaluate the six trig ratios for this triangle, and we're going to do it for angle B. So angle B is going to be our reference. Now let's label all three sides. So the hypotenuse is always across from our right angle. The opposite side is opposite our angle of reference, angle B, and our adjacent side is right beside our angle B. And I want you to use SOKOTOA, if you need it, to write out these three primary trig ratios. So pause the video, do those three on your own. So these are the three primary trig ratios. The sine of angle B is opposite over hypotenuse. So that is going to be four centimeters over five centimeters. The cosine of B is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means it's three over five. And the tangent of angle B is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that means that's going to be four over three. Now let's do our three reciprocal trig ratios. So we have cosecant of angle B, that's the reciprocal of sine. And one way to remember this, so the cosine is the reciprocal ratio that starts with a C, but for some reason it's the reciprocal of sine. Okay, so this is going to be hypotenuse over opposite, which is five over four. And then secant, so secant starts with an S, but for some reason, it's the reciprocal of cosine. 
this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So that means that is equal to 5 over 3. And then cotangent, that one should be an easy one to remember. So it's just the reciprocal of our tan. So this should just be adjacent over opposite, which is just 3 over 4. So for example 2, we're determining the value of the reciprocal trig ratio. So for sine of angle theta, we have 2 over 3, and the reciprocal of sine would be cosecant. It starts with a C. So cosecant theta would just be the reciprocal, 3 over 2. We would just flip this ratio. And then tangent, the reciprocal of tangent is just cotangent. So the cotangent of angle theta is just the reciprocal. So it's going to be 7 over 5. And in the next example, we're asked to evaluate the to the nearest hundredth. So you're going to need your calculator here. We have the secant of 23 degrees, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine, our cosine ratio. So you need to use the cosine button on your calculator. So to do this, we're going to do 1 over the cosine of 23 degrees, and that's what we're going to put in the calculator. And when you do that, you're going to get... 1.09 and the next one is the cosecant of 87 degrees now that's just the reciprocal of our sine ratio so this is the same thing as 1 divided by the sine of 87 degrees so that's what you're going to put in the calculator so put that in the calculator and when you do you will get 1.00 rounded in the next examples, we're going to determine the value of angle theta. So we're given the cotangent of theta is equal to this ratio, 1.2458. And we know that the cotangent is just the reciprocal of our tangent ratio. So cotangent theta is the same thing as 1 over tan theta. And this is still equal to 1.2458. 4, 5, 8, but let's rewrite that as a fraction. So this is just actually over 1. Now we don't have a cotangent button in our calculator, but we do have a tan button. And to make this easier with our calculations, let's actually flip these fractions so that we can use the calculator. So 1 over tan theta, if we flip that, that's just going to be tan theta over 1. And then this fraction, our ratio flipped, is going to be 1 over 1.2458. And now you're just solving for angle theta. So how do you solve for angle theta? Well, we're going to use the inverse tan button on our calculator, the button that is tan to the power of negative 1. So this is how we get rid of the tan part. So theta would just be equal to, and in your calculator, you're going to type this in tan to the power of negative 1, or on your calculator, it might be the second function, tan or shift tan, and then you're going to do 1 divided by 1.2458. So put that in your calculator, and you should get that theta is equal to about 38.75 degrees. And the next question is the secant of theta is equal to 1.652. Now I want you to use the primary trig ratio, put that in your calculator, and solve for this angle theta. So secant of theta is just equal to 1 over the cosine of theta. So that means the cosine of theta is going to be equal to 1 over 1.632. And since we're finding angle theta, we're using the inverse of cos, and that's what you should have put in the calculator. And you should have gotten that theta is equal to 52.21 degrees or 52 degrees. The next question just asks us to solve this triangle. So what does that mean? Well, we have some missing side lengths here, and we do have an unknown angle here. So when you're 
told to solve a triangle, you're just being asked to find the missing angles or sides. So find all the information that's missing. We know two out of the three angles in this triangle. We have a 90 degree angle and angle Y is 63.5 degrees. So we can easily find angle X. Do you remember what all the angles add up to? Well, all angles inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we can just do 180 minus 63.5 degrees minus 90 degrees. And that just means that angle X is equal to 26.5 degrees. And next, you can choose whether you want to find side Y or side W. Let's actually look for side Y. So we can use one of the primary trig ratios here. And now you can choose which side you want to find next. So let's actually just find side Y. And let's use one of the primary trig ratios. If I'm going to use angle Y here, 63.5 degrees, I have the adjacent side and we're looking for the opposite side. So that means we're going to use our tangent ratio. So let's set that up. The tan of y is equal to opposite over adjacent. So our angle y, we know that is 63.5 degrees. And our opposite side, we don't know, that's little y. And our adjacent side is 9.6 centimeters. So to solve this, we need to solve for y. We need to isolate y. So we're just going to multiply everything by 9.6. And when we do that, we're just going to get that y is equal to 19.25 centimeters. And now we're just missing one more side left. We're just missing side W, the hypotenuse. So I want you to pause the video and find the measurement of this side and you can use any method you want, whether if it's one of the primary trig ratios or Pythagorean theorem. So pause the video and find W. So if you're coming back to the video, I just used Pythagorean theorem to find side W and I found that it was equal to approximately 21.51 centimeters. And that's it, we're done. We found all the missing sides and angles in this right angle triangle. Before we move on to the word problem, let's review some terms you should have learned last year. So angles of depression and angles of elevation. So when you have a horizontal line, if you're looking above that horizontal line towards an object, this is your angle of elevation. And if you're looking down below the horizontal line, that's your angle of depression. So one thing to know, your angle of elevation and angle of depression it's always from a horizontal line. And that's the most common mistakes that students will make. They're not forming a horizontal line. So your angle of elevation is just above a horizontal line. Angle of depression is below a horizontal line. So this question says that you are standing 35 meters away from the foot of the CN Tower. So if you drew that, 35 meters away from the CN Tower, and this would be where you are. So the angle of elevation to the top of the CN Tower is 72 degrees. So let's form a triangle, and our angle, well, this is our horizontal line right here. So our angle to the top of the CN Tower, that would be this angle that's formed, that is 72 degrees. And we're being asked to find the height of the CN Tower to the nearest meter. So that means we're finding the height right here. And of course the CN Tower would make a 90 degree angle with the ground. So we've drawn a diagram and our diagram is a right angle triangle. And we need to use one of our trig ratios. So we have an angle here. And if we label our sides appropriately, our hypotenuse is across from our right angle our adjacent side to that angle is the 35 meters and our opposite side to the angle is the height which we don't know so the information that we do know we know the angle which is 72 degrees we know the adjacent side and that is 35 meters 
but we do not know the opposite side, so we need the opposite side. And writing out this information is sometimes really helpful if you have trouble finding which trig ratio you need to use. So since we have the adjacent side, we have an angle, we need the opposite. The trig ratio that uses adjacent and opposite is tan. So we can set this up using tan. So the tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And we know our angle is equal to 72 degrees. Our opposite side is the one we don't know, but that's height, that's the one we need. And our adjacent side is 35 meters. And to get H on its own, we need to multiply by 35. So when you do that, the height should just be equal to 107.72 meters. And we found the height, so that's it.